Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we're going to be talking all about blueberries. And I'm very excited to share with you that I found two wonderful varieties to be growing in warmer climates. And specifically, when I talk about warmer, this could be pretty much all of southern part of the United States, as these are low chill requirements or uh, basically require fewer cold days during the winter as sometimes we go through winter without a you know much of a um, cold experience um, as here we are now on the second week of January um, and it's only rained here once whereas at least one half to two thirds of the country right now is covered in frost so um, definitely a warmer climate we're here in Los Angeles California um, to be specific and the two varieties of um, blueberries I'm going to talk about um, shortly. We're going to talk about the care, the management, the planting practices, um, and all that. The first thing I want to share with you before we even get started is I'm going to take you to um, here just a couple minute lecture, maybe even one minute lecture um, from a meeting I had with Tom Spellman, who is of the Dave Wilson Nursery, who is one of the largest distributor of trees, specifically fruit trees, um, even dor and, and dormant trees in the country. If they're not number one, they're the top three distributors of trees. Um, I had the privilege of meeting with him um, and attending one of his lectures from a year ago, and I'm happy to share that with you, and I'll even put the entire lecture um, where you can enjoy it um, at the end of this video. But specifically what I wanna share with you is he said that pretty much all fruit trees will do better in the ground than they will do in a pot, with the exception of one plant, and guess what that one plant is? We're talking about it today, blueberries. Blueberries, in fact, do better in containers than they otherwise will do in the ground, and the reason for that is is that they don't like their feet, being their roots, wet. They don't like to be continuously wet, and when they're in the ground, whether it's you watering the plants or Mother Nature watering your, you know, your, your landscape, when that soil stays continuously wet, it causes the roots to rot, and and compromises the health of your blueberries. Um, so that's the reason blueberries do better in containers because you can actually manage the water even if it rains a lot in your area. If you've got the right um, potting soil and a potting mix for your plants, it'll be fast draining, it'll get the water out of the way. Um, we're gonna talk about how to prepare your container in just a moment. Um, and just wanna share that with you. So the two things again, um, as Tom Spellman said, that is most important for the health of your blueberry plants is one, is to make sure that it's got fast draining soil, and secondly is to make sure that the soil is acidic, and we're going to talk about acidic soil um, in this video as well. So let's get started. You know, I, I always feel this way. Most everything is going to grow better in the ground than it will in a container, but there's, there's an exception to that rule. Every rule there's an exception to. The exception there, I think, is blueberries. How many people have grown blueberries? Good. A lot of you are. Wow. Well, I absolutely, I have lots of different blueberries. They're all in half wine barrels. Some barrels have two or three or four varieties in the barrel, and I just grow them as one, you know, structure. And uh, nothing makes me happier than to go out onto my patio in May when my granddaughters are out there just mowing down on the blueberries on those half barrels. They're all right there where they can reach them, and I just say, have at them. Enjoy the blueberries. So, there, there's... For container culture, blueberries work really, really well. There are two things that are important to blueberry culture in Southern California. And we have all kinds of varieties that do well here. Anything that's considered a Southern high bush blueberry or a Southern hybrid type blueberry will all do well in Southern California with virtually no chill at all. The, the two critical elements for, for proper blueberry culture are you need an acidic soil mix and you need fast, fast, fast drainage. So the first thing I want to share with you are the varieties of um, blueberries that I picked for my home garden. If you come in a little closer, you can see that this variety over here, even though it's not on the front of the label, it just says blueberry, that's not enough. You need to know what the variety is and do your research on it. If you take a look down below over here, you can see it's called the Misty Blueberry. So we're looking for the variety Misty, and what they shared about it, we're going to match it to things we researched on the internet, but it's a compact shrub, blue-green foliage, and bright pink flowers high quality, medium to large um, berries, and you wanna make sure you plant it in sun. Um, the other variety that I have here to my right 
is the sunshine blueberry. And this one here says it's a dwarf evergreen shrub up to three feet tall. But by the way, there's some research that says it's as little as a foot and a half in height. Produces fruit mid-season, low chill requirements. And again, 150 hours is, is fairly low for um, blueberries and tolerates heat. The other interesting thing I wanna share with you as well on this label is it's amazing how cold hardy these plants are as they can tolerate um, temperatures as low as minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And when it comes to this variety over here, the misty variety, it can go as low as minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so quite hardy plants. The other thing too about the misty variety that's closest to me is that it says and you got to see this over here because this is quite extreme it says that the size of the plant is going to be somewhere between one foot and ten feet and that's not a fair representation of the plant that you're telling me that it's going to be somewhere between this big and four feet taller than myself that's a huge discrepancy what this label is is predominantly sharing with you is it's basically sharing with you the range and height of blueberry varieties but it doesn't specifically talk about the misty variety of blueberry and the reason I want to know the height is so I can position it in my garden in the right spot my goal is to you know when it comes to your landscape is to also work on the landscape design and you wouldn't want to put a blueberry bush that's going to be six to ten feet tall in front of another one that's going to be further away from your point of view that's going to be smaller the goal is to put your largest and, and biggest varieties in the back and your smallest varieties closer to the point of view where you enjoy your garden the other considerations are to also look at the movement of the sun across the sky um, as we all know the sun rises in the east and sets in the west but you're going to want to see how that movement also corresponds to your garden we're going to be talking about that in this garden as well um, but what i also did and it's necessary to better understand your, your um, blueberry varieties is I did a little bit of research. And let me share with you where I found mine. Um, I basically went over here to Burpee. And they're actually one of the stores that are carrying the Ivy Organic products as well, um, which I'll share with you towards the end of this research. But if you take a look here, the Blueberry Sunshine Blue basically reads as a cold, um, hardy variety that requires only 150 chill hours, which matches the label. Adapted to vigorous productive growth in San Diego, Southern California to Seattle in the Northwest. Berries are rich, sweet, medium sized and ripe mid to late season. Is upright compact habit and blue green foliage that turns burgundy in fall makes sunshine blue, especially decorative in pots, tolerates high pH better than most blueberries and is self pollinating, which is great. Um, we turn the page. I also found here on Grow Organic, um, dot com. A little bit more about the blueberry bush. Specifically, what I wanted to know about this is the bush habit. And here it says upright, compact bush reaching three feet tall with blue, green, burgundy foliage in the fall. So again, this here is the sunshine blue variety, which corresponds to this blueberry plant over there on the right. The first one we discussed was Misty. And now we'll read again from the Burpee website. Attractive and productive southern high bush variety easy um, early to fruit whereas again the other one is more of a mid-season so we're going to have misty first and then we're going to get to enjoy the um, sunshine blue second but early to fruit the medium to large sky blue berries are spicy sweet the upright spreading four to six feet tall so now we have a range it's not one to ten feet it's four to six feet tall plants have bright blue foliage that contrasts with pinky white flowers in spring and make lovely ornamental shrubs with the foliage turning burgundy in fall plant with other varieties for better yield misty has a low chill requirement of 300 hours seems a little high um, and does well as far north as seattle washington chill requirements refer to the accumulated hours of temperatures as plants experience between freezing and 45 degrees fahrenheit that is required to break dormancy and then i cross reference that with growerorganic.com as well and my goal again, I can see the, the chill hours matches, 300 hours. And I want to see the habit again, upright spreading, bush reaching four to six feet tall. So now I've read it in two different sources. And now I'm convinced that this is going to be um, somewhat of a larger plant. So this variety goes over here like so. And then the last thing I want to share with Burpee is if you go to burpee.com, we're going to be using that foliar spray um, in the demonstration, the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 plant guard protection from sunburned insects and rodents. I'll talk about how this can be applied to also um, benefit your blueberry plants, among others. 
and your keyword search when you go to burpee.com is plant guard and you'll find it there um, like so. Let's get started. So I'm most excited to share with you. I got these two wine barrels. They're actually constructed out of plastic. You can do the same design looking using wood. You can also use um, clay pots. Um, the choice is yours, but the thing I was looking for most when selecting the pot was size. I've selected something that's gonna be a five gallon, um, roughly a five gallon container. It could be a little bit more, a little bit less, but the goal is this, gonna, this is going to contain the root size very well for the first at least two to three years of this plant's life. And we're gonna watch and grow these together as I like putting up periodic updates throughout the year. Um, the other thing too that we learned from Tom Spellman, I'm not taking credit for this, but he said that the best time for pruning, for those of you that already have your blueberries in the ground, is not in the fall or winter, but in fact it's in the summer. The goal is you're gonna to wanna to, um, control the height to the size that you desire in the summer and allow enough time for it to grow back a little bit more before it enters dormancy in the fall and that will actually maximize the amount of flower buds that will maximize your yields come spring and summer. Um, so for those of you, you know, watching and learning about blueberries for the first time, is you're gonna prune your blueberry plants in the summer after you basically harvested your blueberries. And again, for those of you that have subscribed, you'll see those videos as we're gonna care for these blueberries together. Um, the first thing I wanna share with you is take a look at these pots. When I picked them up, you can see at the bottom, it's basically a plastic, con plastic container with no holes at the bottom, so no way for drainage. So this is not ready to use yet. The other thing over here is that I found at the nursery is that this one here was cracked. And we're not gonna have a problem with this. As you're gonna see how we're gonna end up using these containers, we're gonna use this crack to our advantage. And I was able to also pick this up for about 50% less. Um, these containers I was able to purchase for about $20 a piece, this one being 50% off, 10 bucks. And what we're gonna do, despite this major crack in the container, is we're gonna add some more drainage holes to it because we learned that the two most important things for blueberry care is acidic soil and drainage. Drainage is key. That's the reason blueberries do better in containers than they do in the ground because we can control the amount of water these plants get. So let's start off with adding some more drain holes. So did I make my point? Check out all of these holes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, I'm guessing about a dozen holes across the bottom. Um, and this is now gonna be ready to install in the garden. So now let's continue forward with our second container. So you can see here with the second container, basically did a little bit more of a circular design with four more holes in the middle. So uh, let's get these containers installed and continue on with the planting project. So here we are now in the midst of several fruit trees in the fruit forest of our backyard. And as you can see just above us is our ice cream banana, one of three varieties of bananas we've got growing here in the garden. If you take a look up, this is now the second year that this ice cream banana is providing fruit. This mother plant that you're looking at is just a sucker that was off a parent plant that we harvested over 60 pounds of ice cream bananas just last year. So we've got these ice cream bananas. It would have ripened within, on average, 90 days from the time it bloomed. But because, again, of the hillside and the limited amount of sunlight we have during the winter months, um, basically the growth and the ripening process and everything is just on halt. So I would expect again, as it did last year, between the months of April and May, the, the metabolism of the plant will pick up, the ripening process will continue, and we'll get to enjoy another hopefully 60 pounds of ice cream bananas. Um, let's come in a little closer. So the goal now is to basically decide on the position of the container, and this is critical. Whether I put it on this side of the fruit trees or the other side of the fruit trees, will affect the productivity of our blueberry plants. So here we are on this side of a Fuerte Avocado. And if I were to put the container, let's say on this side of the plant, it'll be in a better position than if it were on the other side of the plant. And for a lot of growers, see the majority of growers, they might not see a difference. They just basically wanna go with locations and where it looks best, but it's not always about looks. You gotta think about how is it gonna produce the best. 
If you're up in the northern hemisphere, as it is um, most of Mexico, United States, and Canada, then it's going to be the southern side of your tree that's going to be exposed to the most amount of light, resulting in maximum shade on the northern side of the plant. So if you take a look here at, for example, our Fuerte avocado tree, and again, you can see in here the ivory organics that was coated when we did our summer pruning to basically shield the underlying tree trunk from basically, you know, sunburn. And this basically offers, you know, insulation both in the summer as well as in the winter. But you can see on the leaves, and this is the point I want to uh, make to you. Oh, and I can show you the can of the product that we use. So it's basically this product over here. It's Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Protection Against Damaging Sunburn, Insects, and Rodents. Um, and you can see that we've coated it all the way down to the base to basically protect it from girdling rodents. We've coated any pruned branches to prevent the entry of termites or beetles within the plant. And then it's offering, as we already said, protection against the extremes of sun, whether it be winter or summer. But what I want to show you here is take a look at the leaves. You can see on this side, we're getting sun. This is the southern side of the plant. On the northern side of the plant, most of those leaves are in the shade. We're approaching near the end of the day and the sun is on its way down. And again, being on a hillside, we're, um, we've lost at least an extra hour or two of sun we would otherwise be enjoying. But we're about 30 to 60 days away from that sun getting a little higher in the sky as we enter the warmer months of February and March and everything's gonna wake up and begin performing excellently. So my point here is, if I put this container on the south side of the plant, I will benefit more light than if I put it on the north side of the plant where I would actually end up um, in too much shade and it would affect the productivity of the fruiting blueberry. Um, blueberries also can tolerate some shade better than other fruit trees. Um, so. And I've seen a lot of blueberries thriving excellently under the canopy of other plants, but consider that when positioning it around a tree, that you're gonna to wanna to put it on the south side of the tree, more so than on the north side of the plant. I hope I've made that, um, that point clear. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to um, put the container in the ground. We're not gonna set it on the ground, we're gonna put it in. We're actually gonna bury it at least an inch or two under the ground. And let me make my point here. If we take, for example, some Reynolds wrap, and we um, put it here on the ground like so. I can clear an area over here. If I were to put this down like so and cover the corners up, what would happen within a, sh a few short minutes is it would begin to fog up. And that fog is basically the moisture under the ground trying to get out. The entire soil, your entire backyard is breathing. Even in the hottest and driest of months, there's typically moisture still under the ground that's being released and given off um, through the surface. So the goal by positioning your container into the ground, rather than for those of you that have to put it on your deck or your porch or on a concrete surface, it'll reap the benefit of those days that you're away from home or, um, or you've got an automatic system that's not functioning, um, but it'll actually be better um, rounded in regards to making sure that the plant is watered and in between left to dry, but as um, also Tom Spellman said, never bone dry. So the goal is you want it to, uh, when you water, make sure you soak the entire um, soil medium and allow that water to get out quickly. And that's again, depending on the soil mix that we're gonna use, which we're gonna talk about shortly. And the goal is to make sure that it's dry between waterings, but never to the point that there's no moisture at all in the soil. But to prevent the risk of no moisture in the soil by positioning it in the ground, there's still gonna be some moisture from the ground that's gonna penetrate through these holes and basically offer moisture into the growing pot. And as you can see over here, there's an apple tree that I've done exactly that too. And that's the reason that a lot of my pots here in the garden are all buried a couple of inches into the ground as you can see over here. Um, and that helps round the, the basically um, making sure that there's always moisture within the pot even when you may have missed um, the exact or the better day for watering the plant. Well, let's get started now. So the first of two position I've already decided where these containers are going is, one is gonna be going in this area over here, roughly. And right now we've got a lemon verbena. I've got cuttings off of this where I'll be rejuvenating it and planting it again in the spring. Um, and then I've got this apple tree in a pot, which we've grafted. 
We've done an educational video on grafting apple trees, but you can see over here, I'll share with you again. This here is coated with the Ivory Organics. We can apply some more Ivory Organics to protect the graft. As you can see, there's a lot of exposed and open areas of wood, and coating it will help protect um, the entryway of a lot of pests from entering and possibly damaging the graft. Um, but we've decided on the two best areas for putting these pots is gonna be one in this area, and the second one is gonna be going, if you can back up a couple of inches, you can see that we've got over here some Swiss chard. Um, but I basically want to position it somewhere right here in the middle. So I'm going to harvest the Swiss chard as well so it doesn't go to waste. We'll make an excellent salad out of that um, for later today. Um, and we're basically going to have these pots. It doesn't look right now, but we're going to line them up in this area where it'll capture the light between um, as the sun rises to set. There'll always be light coming in between these two trees. As long as I manage and prune these trees into its respective position, these blueberries will be capturing the sunlight between the plants, um, enjoying a little bit of filtered light, which is okay, and blueberries thrive and enjoy that. And it's gonna have no competition with other trees as it's in its own container and in its own soil, and it's, we're gonna feed it and make sure that it's um, very well nourished as well. So let's get started with that. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clear this area. Pause. So the next step is we're gonna now reduce the soil level by about an inch or two to make room for this pot. If you can see over here, we're about an inch maybe below the soil. I'm now gonna just backfill it around the pot like so. This sprinkler that's in this position over here will raise to about the height of the container. That'll then spray in this direction. It'll hit the bush and drop a lot of moisture that way. And we're also gonna to have to periodically visit the plant and maybe even hand water or we can come up with a drip system where it'll um, saturate and soak this entire area. The one thing I don't like about a drip system, just to let you know, is that it sometimes just waters one side of the plant. You gotta basically come up with a method of watering the entire area of the plant, especially the surface, as the majority of the roots are gonna be in the upper um, six inches to a foot, and the goal is to then make sure that all of it is saturated and soaked with water. So we're gonna come up with a better system for irrigation. So again, that might be a future video that we'll discuss, but right now I know I'm blocking the sprinkler, but I'm gonna deal with this after the video. Now to make sure we've got fast draining soil, one of the first and the key steps to making sure we've got good drainage is to add some gravel, some rocks, and if you've got some broken clay pieces, this is another excellent product to use. Something you should not be doing um, for your potted plants is using wood chips, which are plentiful here in our garden as we've used this to basically you know, insulate the soil. There's a lot of benefits, which I'm not gonna get into in this video, but by putting this at the bottom of your pot, these wood chips are gonna end up robbing the soil of a lot of the nutrients, specifically nitrogen, and it also could potentially contribute towards rot, especially when there's too much moisture in there. So the better alternative for accomplishing good drainage in a healthy way is to use crushed rock. So um, this is what we're gonna do here. And we can even take our clay pieces as well. And we're just basically gonna scatter those like so. So the next up is soil. I picked over here this product at the local nursery, um, which says raised bed and potting mix. This is critical. Um, and the other thing I was looking for also is, is a product that was not enriched with chemical fertilizers. There's a lot of products out there that says, you know, potting soil with six months of feed. That's a big negative. If you take a look at the percentages and also the contents of this product, let's turn that around. Let's take a look at what it's made out of. And you should be doing this with pretty much all of your products. If you take a look over here, it's only got 0.01% nitrogen, 
um, or over here, it's, it's actually 0.3% nitrogen of a percent, which is like not even 1%, 0.1% of phosphate, and here's some potash, 0.1%, and then it's derived from hyd um, hyd hydrated poultry manure, um, so basically chicken manure, hydrolyzed feather meals, um, kelp meal, bad guano, and ferrous sulfate. Um, when it comes to, and you can take a look in here, you can see all of these white specks in here. All of those white are basically perlite. And you can also see this, um, you know, some wood chips in there. You can see all of the organic matter that's in there. But there may be too much organic matter in here. The expert that I'm going to get hopefully as a speaker for us within the next month or two is Gary at the Laguna Hills Nursery in Tustin, I believe, or Santa Ana. It's right on the border. Um, but Gary's going to discuss um, soil and what makes a perfect soil. Naturally, in the environment where most of these plants, you can even say where they grow natively and, um, and naturally, will be soil that is not 100% organic, not entirely made out of all of these organic compounds, but rather be somewhere as high as 90 to 98% inorganic matter, such as clay, such as sand, such as silt. That actually makes up the majority of soil. By putting this much organic, most of this is gonna turn into dust over the next year or two, and it's gonna result in a plant that's settled significantly and substantially. Um, so Gary's gonna talk about a formula that's even um, superior to some of these plant um, soils that you'll find at your nursery, where it's based on more um, inorganic matter um, and then basically improved with the right components of organic matter. And I'm gonna have him better explain it, but what I'm going to do to improve this condition of potting soil, and one other thing I want to make as a point on potting soil is do not put potting soil in the ground. By doing so, this specific formula and any potting soil is specifically designed to retain moisture. I know the goal is to create something that's fast flowing and, and dries quickly, but a potting soil is designed to do exactly that. Allow for fast drainage. There's typically also sand that might be um, added to also help improve the drainage as well of soil. Um, or your potting soil specifically, but adding something like this where it says potting soil to your soil will actually result in your um, earth and the, and, and the plants around it absorbing too much water as this is um, designed to basically retain water between the waterings in a container, hence the word potting mix. So again, do not put potting mix in your soil and again, don't use your soil mixes in your pots as again, they're specifically designed and formulated to do and perform best in the conditions that they're designed to, and created to do. But what I'm gonna do again now to improve this is first I'm gonna put a couple of handfuls near the base. So if you wanna follow me and watch me um, fill this container up, I'm just gonna put about an inch or two of this potty mix into the pot. And then as we discuss, all of this whiteness that you see in here is this product over here, which is called perlite. This is an old bag, but perlite, and hopefully you can read through all of this, you know, this aged bag over here, it says, help prevent soil um, compaction, promote strong root development, and excellent for um, um, starting cuttings. And if you take a look at this product, and again, this is pure white, what it does is it helps, um, one, retain water, and at the same time, it also helps with drainage, it kind of serves like two functions in one product. But I like adding, I would say, um, about a third extra to whatever I've added at the base. Whatever we did to the base, we're gonna do to the top as well. And I'm basically gonna mix that perlite into that potting soil. And you can see that it's a lot more white. And the benefit of this is it's gonna help that much more with drainage. Another product that works good, but perlite is still my preference, is this. And this product makes it into a lot of um, potting soils as well, is known as vermiculite. And again, let's talk about the benefits of vermiculite. Improves moisture and nutrient retention, aids faster seed germination, prevents soil compaction. You can see it's um, pretty similar to what we just read about perlite. And you can take a look at the, kind of looks like fool's gold in color. And you can add that as well. But again, my focus is not so much on vermiculite as much as it is on perlite. So um, again, I'm not telling you to buy both products, but I do 
strongly recommend the addition of more perlite towards the base as well as in the top soil. And what that's going to do is help, um, one, with the drainage, two, by adding it near the top, it's going to help prevent stem rot and root rot to the plant. And we're going to um, continue forward with that. Now that we've created a really good base soil, we're just going to now fill it up to the level where we want this container plant to be, which is just about an inch below the rim of this um, pot. So let's continue adding some more soil. So here we are now. I believe we've got the soil at the right level. Um, we'll basically here put the pot one more time in here. If I were to air, you know, the goal, as I said, is to create about a rim um, with about an inch of space to basically once I water, I can saturate and soak it with water. Um, but if I were to air, I can go a little bit higher as I know that the soil is going to eventually um, break down as it's got so much organics in it. Um, what you can also do as putting it in is you can also compact the soil a little bit. So you can just go with your palm and press down on the soil. You can feel like there's a lot of air, which is a, a plus, but you might want to compact it a little bit so it doesn't give immediately after you water that it, that, it, um, that it basically settles significantly more. But you can add a little bit of pressure. I'm not recommending you put a lot. As you can see, I'm just basically patting it with one hand to basically fill in any um, air pockets that may exist. At this point so far, we're going to repeat it one more time once we fill it up to the level, the desired level. So I'm gonna put the plant in here again, and you can see we've got a pretty good height. I'm like really close to the rim of the um, container, but I know it's gonna settle some, so I'm okay with that right now. And then when removing the plant, and just take a look again where we are. This here is the first container. The point of view in my garden is from a seating area that's about 10, 20 feet behind you, and I like looking in. When it comes to the height, my goal is I wanna have the higher plant in. Um, I'm glad we talked about this because I got this reversed. This here in front of me is the misty that grows four to six feet compared to behind me is that sunshine blue that only grows on average between two to three feet. So I want the shorter one up here so we're gonna reverse and put the misty behind me where I'm gonna have the height so you can just imagine that this is the plant that's gonna be standing taller like up in, the, in the, you know, you can kind of visualize that it's gonna kind of fill up this growing zone, this area between the two trees and then I'm going to have a smaller, more compact blueberry bush in this area. And what I've now... So here we are now. We've pretty much positioned the um, blueberry into the container. We're looking at the height. Um, the other thing I want to share with you is a matter of perspective. I told you everything's a point of views and there's a little bit of, if not a lot, of um, horticultural and plant design that's going behind this as well. We did our research to find out which one's gonna grow taller, which one's gonna be shorter, which one's gonna be bushier, which one's gonna be lankier, and you've gotta foresee how that's gonna fit in your garden. With you being the point of view into this garden, and as you can see, that wall behind me marks my property boundary, and I'm putting my tallest stuff in that area, at least in the long term. As you saw this banana that's in front of me, um, that's really tall, I put you know over here a medium-sized three-in-one apple tree, which I'm gonna share with you momentarily, and then behind that, um, a fig tree that'll be reaching 15 to 25 feet as well. My bananas, I'm still in the process of selecting my favorite of the three varieties, and then I'll narrow it down to possibly one or two. Um, so there's always a little bit of experiment happening in this garden from year to year. Um, so when it comes to design, being that I've got my sunshine blue here in front of me, this one, as we research, will grow about two to three feet. So the goal is this is gonna fit in a growing area that's gonna be somewhere up in this area, whereas the misty variety we know is going to grow four to six feet. I stand six feet tall so we're talking about a bush that's going to be filling in this growing zone between these trees and capturing that light that's above me. So we're going to have basically something that's going to be a pyramid growth with more height in this area and shorter as you get closer to you. So that's the design that we're um, going to be you know striving for and we're going to be pruning in accordance with that as well and you're going to be there to join us as we go throughout the year and work on other demonstrations and projects throughout the garden. So let's take a look now at this. We've just put it in. One other thing I want to share with you when I selected this blueberry variety, if you come in a little closer, as well as the, um, so this here is the sunshine blue variety. The other one we um, also picked up is the misty. But what I'm looking at, and the reason I picked this one over the other varieties is, is it had a lot of stems near the base. I can see over here I've got one, two, three, four, five stems coming off the base crown and it also had a lot more thickness and a lot more vigor than the other varieties and that's the reason this one here was selected 
over the other varieties. And now what we're going to do is we're going to remove it from the container. I like basically positioning my hand on top to basically secure the top soil in place to minimize stress to the plant. Give the base a couple of taps like that and I can now remove the container like so. I'm now going to inspect the roots to make sure that there isn't any um, um, any overcrowding happening with the root system. I like to typically remove um, and basically wake up the base of the roots. If there's any um, circling happening with the roots, you may want to prune those out carefully or um, untangle them gently. And you can take a look at the roots that also made it out to the side of the container. And you can kind of just rub your fingers along the side to basically wake up the roots and let it know that it's no longer in a container and that it's free to now reach its roots out into the rest of the container. And now we're just basically going to position it um, in the direction that we want it to be. And now we're going to basically backfill it with some more potting mix. So once you got to that last inch or two, if you come in a little closer, you can still see that this is the shape of the container right here around my hands. We pretty much backfilled all of the soil around it. We're adding a little bit of compaction as we work our way up. You can see with our, just our fingertips. And then, um, and the reason again for um, adding some compaction is to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles within the soil near the roots that could potentially be drying out the roots. We wanna make sure the roots are in contact with the soil and some moisture and not into any air pockets where those roots that are exposed to the air could potentially dry out. So once we get to that top inch or two, what I like doing is basically adding, as we did towards the base, some more perlite. So what we're gonna do is just add about another couple of cups. And the goal is I'm trying to achieve about a one third to one fourth perlite per whatever that potting mix is to basically increase aeration, to increase drainage, and to prevent, as we already mentioned, the risk of stem rot and root rot. So that should be sufficient. If we take a look down here now, you can see all the perlite that we've got, and now we're just gonna mix that into the potting mix to basically create something that's even got more drainage than it otherwise would be alone. And now we can use this mixture as the final backfill. I think we got it. The goal, again, I can feel this is the surface of the, um, of, of the soil that it was in the pot, and the goal is to make sure that it's in line with the backfill soil that we've added, so that we make sure, again, that we're not adding too much soil above the level that it was in while it was in the container. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that same soil level that it was in the container is happening within your pot as well. So we're just gonna, Fill that in, we're adding a little bit more compression. And then for those of you that already know blueberries, there's one more secret and we already said it. One is to make sure that we maximize on drainage and health, but that second most important thing is that we have very acidic soil. Um, let me correct that, not necessarily very acidic, but we just wanna have a more of an acidic soil than an alkaline soil. Um, to accomplish acidity, there's products such as this. and. I found this in my garage, but this here is a product made by Espoma Organics. Let me open that up here. And then you can see it says soil acidifier, and it says for organic gardening, lowers soil pH, lowering it makes it more acidic, all natural, pelletized, safer than aluminum sulfate for blueberries, and that's what we're doing right now, and hydrangeas, and without even reading the directions, I'm not even gonna add something like a cup of plant or whatever, you know, um, based on size. I'm simply just going to take about a handful, because typically when it comes to fertilizing your plants, especially at installation, you don't really need to fertilize it. And again, being that it's also January, um, 
there's not much happening within the plant. Even though you see all these beautiful blossoms, if you want to come in a little closer so you can see how beautiful these flowers are, these here are the blossoms of the plant. And you can see over here, these are the teeny tiny blueberries that it's already um, set fruit to. Here's some more medium sized blueberries as well, right in there. Um, so there is activity happening here, but even though there's activity, this is the most slowest time of the year for these plants as um, as they wake up and go into spring. Closer to spring is when you're gonna add a moderate amount of fertilizer. By summer when the activity is peaking, you're gonna add the most according to the product label. By fall, you're gonna taper off. And by winter, as most plants, we're gonna do nothing. But this here is gonna help acidify the soil. Something else that you can do to naturally create the acidity within the plant is compost. Most of your organic compost that you've got, as you can see, I've got that bin over there behind me over my left shoulder. But that compost bin also has a lot of organic matter and that organic matter is naturally acidic and can help benefit the soil. Um, so you can even use um, you know, your homemade compost to help create the acidity that will maximize the health and the vitality of your plants. So another excellent additive for accomplishing the acidity of your soil is using a product such as this. If you take a look. Um, it says sphagnum moss or sphagnum peat moss and peat just simply means um, you know basically composted moss so you can take a look what we're adding is some peat moss and peat moss is naturally acidic as well um, so if we basically add this to the potting mix you can see this I've already added a lot more perlite to the um, potting mix but that's another way to accomplish acidity and blueberries love it So the next step is watering your plants. When watering, and you can see I'm trying to saturate the soil as much as I can, but it's so fast draining, I can't even get it to accumulate on one side of the plant. So I gotta go all the way around, water the front, the back, the sides, and all the way around. Um, so if you do, for example, a drip system and it's sitting on this side, the water might be going straight through, starting at the top and exiting the bottom, and never saturating and um, and basically hydrating the whole backside of the plant. So make sure when you water, you water all the way around your plant. That'll help activate all of the life within your potting soil and medium. It'll also help invigorate the roots uniformly throughout the pot. And the goal when watering is to make sure, again, when you do go to water your plant, that you soak the soil. You're gonna wanna make sure that it's basically wet all the way from the top surface soil down to the very base. You're gonna want it to basically leach going down to the soil. If this is sitting on your concrete patio or your deck, then you're gonna wait for that water to basically come out. If you've got a saucer, allow the plant to basically hold that water in the saucer for maybe a day, but do not allow that water to sit in that saucer for days on end as that will basically cause the entire soil to begin to rot. You're gonna want it basically to soak and then immediately release and dry out but again, as we said at the beginning, not bone dry. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's dry but never bone dry between waterings. The other lesson that we learned from Lisa Smith, and that'll be another video that I'll post as well, is when watering is to mimic rain. When you've got an irrigation system around your plant, you don't just water, when it rains on your plant, it's not just watering one side of your plant. It's watering the entire growing zone, that entire area around the plant. So make sure you water that entire area very thoroughly. So the last step we're gonna do here is we're gonna apply this product, which is the Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard Ready to Use Spray. This is protection against damaging sunburn, insects, and rodents. For use on your roses, fruit, nut trees, ornamental trees, and shrubs. A non-toxic, environmentally safe, and organic product. I'll share with you the back as well, um, where it basically talks about the active ingredients. You can see here that it's got castor oil and cinnamon and cloves and garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. And then it's also got limestone, which is a traditional way of whitewashing your plant. Mica is a way other cultures used to whitewash their plants. The milk and the silica and the iron oxide together help create um, protection that when sprayed on the leaves will help keep the plant cool um, on average for about two to three seasons. 
Um, what we're going to do in applying it now is we're going to help make sure that this plant stays cool. We're towards the end of the day, but tomorrow we want to minimize that stress to the plant. I'm going to share a brochure with you in just a minute, but what I'm going to do is simply take this product, make sure I thoroughly shake it, and then I want you to watch as I apply this to the plant. You can see that as I spray it, what it does is create a light film of white, as you can see over here, like an organic white sunblock to the leaves, and that's gonna help keep the plant cooler. And then that garlic and cinnamon and um, castor will also help keep the slugs and the other, and grasshoppers and other pests from chewing on the leaves until the plant gets established and stronger and can, until the plant's defenses get strong enough to tolerate some abuse by other pests um, as well as extremes in summer as well as winter. But this product will help basically curb those extremes. You may have noticed that between these two blueberries was this three-in-one apple tree that I grafted. It's actually one root that I basically pruned very short to create three suckers. And each one of these suckers I basically grafted with three different varieties of apples, from Granny Smith um, to a reddish green variety to a red variety. So we've got green, green, red, and red um, basically on one root stock and is basically containing a very small area within our um, food forest here at home. Um, you may have noticed that this branch over here is coated with the ivory organics color brown, this one over here white, and the one behind me green. You can see it's available in all these different colors. What I want to share with you is this can over here, as you can see over here, that's also registered material for use in organic agriculture. The benefits of the product um, here on the lid, protection um, protects newly installed plants and trees, shields pruned and damaged surfaces. Um, and we basically used it here on this apple tree um, that we recently defoliated to force dormancy on this plant. Um, but we basically use it as a dormant spray on our deciduous trees within the garden. So these two blueberries that we've planted and added to our food forest here in the garden are my newest and my most favorite additions to the garden. I hope you would agree as well. If you found this video informative, be sure to like it. Most importantly, by subscribing down below, you'll be connected to this and all of our other educational gardening videos. Um, and hopefully you can monitor the progress and the success of these blueberries um, by following us by subscribing now. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.